See, the, the betting's historical, so the betting goes back, you know, my last bet that would get me in trouble, I think, was like 2008. So they'd found an, an account which was a historical account, mm -hmm. and it was an, a, a betting habit I'd picked up before I became a professional footballer. And it, 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 you've been around the football game long enough to know that the rules were tightened to become more mm -hmm. and more stringent as, as, as we progressed. So when I first started, you could bet on games that you weren't involved in. Mm -hmm. So I could bet on an Arsenal fixture for it. And then mm -hmm. they tightened it up and tightened it up and tightened it up. So you weren't allowed to play, you shouldn't have placed bets on any In the game. end, now it's yeah. a blanket ban because yeah. the FA don't understand uh, really the, the, that, that the culture that they live in and also, you know, they're taking uh, the money from the advertisements. And we live in a culture where... Oh, there's a lot of hypocrisy is about betting in football. Yeah, and we live in a culture where I grew up. I was betting before I became a footballer. So mm -hmm. becoming a footballer was kind of secondary. You know, I'd already picked up the habit. Then but my, point, my into... point would be, you, you would have known when you did it that the risk was there that if you were caught, yeah. that you'd be banned, you'd well, be suspended. Yeah, and but it, you for still me, did Piers, it. it was the same as, you know, speeding on, you know, going over 70 on the motorway, if I went 71 or 72, you know, if you get caught, there's a risk there could be. But I didn't think it would be that serious. You know? Except there is something slightly more serious about it, isn't there? Because you, I'm sure you would say that you have a problem with betting. I think you have a problem, yeah, when you have 15,000 bets over a 12-year period. I mean, a 1,000 of them on football. I enjoyed betting. Mm. For betting, for me, was a release from the pressure because I couldn't, I couldn't drink. I tried that. That didn't really work for me. Mm. couldn't do drugs because I'd get banned for an even longer period of time. Incidentally, I'd probably have got banned for less, yeah. less time and I'd have been able to train. So the ban on betting is more stringent than the ban on drugs. Do and I can't can do womanising because I came from a broken family and I didn't want to do that and it wasn't mm -hmm. something that was... Uh, it, having a strong family environment for my mm -hmm. kids was important to me. So when I look at options or stresses to release, I could sit in the hotel Friday night, sport would be on the TV, I could get my phone out, no one would know, there's no consequence of it the next day. And that's the thing that I think that confuses people is they're going, well, why would you bet £100 right. on that? What, for me, the fix wasn't the amount of money or the, the win. With some gamblers, that is the case. You know, it's, they have £100, they need £200 to get the same kick, 500 1000 So yours 10, wasn't 000. financially motivated? No, mine was a, a, an inter intellectual exercise. Yeah. So for me, I'm thinking, I want to predict the outcome. So when you look at my football betting, it, in context, it's actually, uh, I'm a huge sports fan. So it'd be sport betting. I mean, I place more bets on other sports than I did on football. How much are you missing playing? Oh, it was institutionalised. So you think I've all I've ever dreamt about mm. is being a footballer from the age of conscious memory. I go to junior school, dream about being a footballer, senior school, mm. then I leave senior school, go into a professional football environment. So it must be eating away, away at you, isn't it? Uh, I don't live like that. I, I don't know whether it's a skill or a, or, a, or, a, or a problem of mine. That I just keep moving forward. I mean, you've got to be resilient to be mm. in the position that we're all in. But have you can life. Say, I mean, the way you describe your betting... You, you were still enjoying it. We, and yeah. usually addictions, for instance, are when you can't control a behaviour and you stop enjoying it. Yeah. So do you consider yourself an addict? I think I have addictive tendencies mm. and I think that... Because, the, it's, the because he's put it's the a... kibosh on your footballing career, certainly for the, for the time being. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm... so why did you not try and do more to stop it? Because I enjoyed it, it's, it's the reality. I was enjoying it more than you enjoyed playing football. Well, I didn't ever think it'd be. That was I, did, the I didn't ever think, it? Suzanne, that I would get banned for it, because I was in a dressing room where it was commonplace. Everybody was kind of do it. There's an easy way for me to not get caught, which do you feel is you were stupidly fairly treated. No, no, I was punished, and because I think I'd lived as an outlaw in mm. terms of I've been in trouble lots of times. I got an outlaw punishment. I was maybe made an example of, but I think if they were to enforce the rule. That we, we'd, we'd end up with a, an ep there is an epidemic. There. I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. Do you think more people yeah. would well, and I've should said on record be banned. on Radio Four? Yeah. I think it was conservatively half the Premier League right. or half the I'm league sure be banned. And I think sure I was I think it would be a lot more than that. But, Joey, talking wow. to you, talking to you. Uh, I've known you quite a long time. We did question time together. And I, you know, you, you're very creditable on that, and you do the Cambridge Union, Oxford Union, and you do a good job there. And people are maybe surprised that a footballer can be articulate and self-aware and be honest in the way you're talking, right? Yeah, I'm not, though. But, but you, you have changed over these. If we had you here ten years ago, you'd be a far more aggressive person to interview, I suspect. <laughs> How have you found more peace with yourself? 
I think you just mature, don't you? Do we not? That's what we all do. I mean, you're forgetting that most footballers are, are young lads, and if you put a spotlight on your life, any of our lives, at 18, 19, 20, 21, you, you can't imagine what we'd be up to. And then I'd, I'd factored into that, that they're all very, very wealthy with it, and they're probably earning way beyond uh, what they ever expected to earn. Mm -hmm. You get all the trappings of, of that fame, the, it's going to be who dangerous. Who are the people who should be helping with that? Is that the managers and, or is that family or... I mean, it, because it, you're absolutely right. Young, impressionable mm. lads mm. swamped with money, attention and fame. It's, it's a recipe for disaster in so many potential cases. Yeah, and it's a relatively new phenomenon. It's only, what, well, since the because Premier League. Because of the level of the money involved, and the most wages of the involved. Most of the guys who play football, because of what it takes to forge a footballer in terms of the psychological uh, aspects that go into it, are from underprivileged backgrounds. Yes. So then you, you, you factor in that combination. Yeah. It, it's difficult, but also bear in mind, there's lots of players who can handle it. You look at lots of other players who mm. can handle the money, What's can the handle the fame. Then? Everybody's different. Everybody's approach to it's different. It's the same way somebody wins, say for instance, the X Factor and the fine, mm. and then you see somebody else who wins it who goes completely mm. off the rails. It's